The two halves of the soul have separated, and the soul is connected to a spirit form and a material form. And these are called, what do you reckon? Soul mates. That's correct. And uh, what happens is the most each soul has a risky half of the personality, if you like. And the one who's willing to take the most risks incarnates first. And then the other one hovers, if you like, close to that other soul, following it around until it gets an opportunity to in, to, to incarnate as well. So the let's say the male half took the risk first and then incarnated. The female half of the soul will wait and will just hover around until it gets a chance to incarnate near where the male half is. They are very often met in this physical world, but because of their emotional injuries, they very often don't like each other. <laughs> okay. Will you think about what injuries do? You, you, injuries cause emotions inside of you, right? And once those emotions rise inside of you, you start defining your relationships with people based on what you've been taught from your parents and what you believe to be the ideal woman or the ideal man from your parents' relationship in many cases. And so many of your attractions are actually based around your emotional injuries rather than the pure soul condition. And that's why many meet while they're on the earth and they actually walk past each other and ignore each other. Yeah. Mind you, there are many who have met too on the earth who have gotten together and stayed together too. And there are many who have met on earth who uh, the husband's gone off and cheated on his soul. Right? And I know of some cases where I've actually talked to them where the husband killed his soul. And it wasn't, they weren't married, but they killed him. Do they ever make up for Yes, they do. Yeah. We'll talk about what happens as, as it progresses. So, now, the reason why this incarnation process occurs is so that you can experience life, so that you can learn to make choice, so that you can learn to experience your free will, so that you can learn about yourself and your personality, so that you can learn how to grow. Does that make sense? But it's totally dependent on your desire. In other words, you don't have to grow if you don't want to. You don't have to learn anything if you don't want to. You don't have to grow in love if you don't want to. Because one of the beautiful things that God has given us is this free will that we have, that each of us have, that, is, that we can decide what we want to do. But do all the souls have to incarnate first? Or can they... um, remember when the souls in this location it doesn't know about itself yet. So to actually go through the process to learn about itself, it has to incarnate. Now, it may incarnate, and then within a few months of incarnating, while still in the mum's womb, pass. So miscarriage, for example. Now, it has still got an individualization, and there is a place in the spirit world where spirits look after the soul, look after the babies who have uh, miscarried. So if any of you ladies had a miscarriage? Quite another. Every one of your miscarried children are in the spirit world, and you can talk to them through a medium. You can talk to them. Um, I did, and I started communicating with her when she was about she would have been four. Yep. And I had an out of body experience where I actually went to where she was. Yep. And July was when it happened. So every year for that month of July, she would come. And I saw her grow up, mm -hmm. and I saw her change. Yep. And she was telling me the work she was doing up there, you yep. know, what they had her involved in. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when she was probably mid-20s, I kind of lost contact with her. And I'll explain why. Please. <laughs> you haven't lost contact with her. She's still around you. But there's a reason why you feel like you've lost contact. And we'll talk about it. But and you can actually talk to your children that have passed constantly, and they will listen to you. Also, I don't know if all of you are aware, but every night when you go to sleep, 
you go to the spirit world. And so if you've had miscarried children, you spend all of that time in your sleep state with them. Yeah, very likely they are with you quite more often than what you think they are. And it depends a little on the laws of attraction again. We'll explain why, why that's the case, but yeah. So, in the case of twins, it's quite interesting because the triplets, whatever. Yep. So you've got male and female for each one of the babies being born? Yes, like, uh, let's say it's triplets, then there'll be three souls of which are halves incarnate into those three separate forms. Does that make sense? And the other, their other soulmates will be somewhere else trying to incarnate at some time. Somebody else is going to have <laughs> And they might not have twins though. They, it, it could be, yeah, you can be, your soul, if you're a twin, your soulmate doesn't have to be a twin. But if you're oh, a twin, but you're a twin, be your soulmate? No. Is there a certain laws governing the process of incarnation? We'll talk about If you want to, we can talk about some of those laws. But I want to put it, present the overview first, if that makes sense. Yeah. Alright, is there any questions before I go on? Can you just explain briefly that the half, how we're half, yeah, I don't think I understand that. If you can just for a moment picture the soul, the complete soul, is like two half, two halves merged together, like the yin yang symbol that we often draw. Right? But what it is energetically is there's all these electrical impulses or connections going between each. The actual connections going between them also energetic connections. They're actually emotions, actually, that connect the two halves of the soul together and make it a complete unit. So the complete soul actually is all is like a it's like a pristine ball of energy of which has lots and lots of energetic connections between the two halves when it splits it it then needs a physical and a spirit body form to experience it to experience life so that half needs a spirit and material body form and this half needs a spirit and material body form to experience life if it if that didn't occur the half of the soul couldn't exist and actually experience life. So it needs, the, each half of the soul either needs each other in a complete form to experience, or when separated, it needs a, needs a body to experience. It's a male and female energy soul? And the way that it, it, the way it happens is that with, any, with everything God creates, there's a huge variety. So imagine this is, on this end, this is all the masculinity of the soul, and this is all the femininity of the soul. And we're talking about complete soul here. All, all of you at school remember the standard dis distribution graph? You remember that from mathematics? We remember that in the middle bit, was in the 90 percentile range if you like, most, most of the souls in that region split into a masculine-feminine split. So in other words, one half of the soul is male, the other half of the soul is female. When the soul, the complete soul I'm talking about, is predominantly masculine, still with some feminine characteristics, but predominantly masculine, the two halves of the soul will be masculine and masculine. So in other words, when it splits, it'll be like a gay soul. Does that make sense? On this end, the two halves of the soul are predominantly feminine. So when it splits, it will split into two female bodies. They'll still be soulmates though, and they'll still be they'll still be complementary to each other. Does that make sense? So this is the complete soul I'm talking about. The complete soul splits in two. Whether that split is masculine and feminine in terms of bodies, because remember the soul doesn't have a body, so it's just it's just what it desires as a body because of its sexuality. The soul certainly has sexuality. And that's why sexuality is an important part of your life. 